my name is Paul de la Aguila Pla and I'm a research staff scientist at CIBM and a postdoctoral researcher at EPFL and I took care of developing new image processing programming laboratories using Jupyter Notebooks. So basically we use the notebooks to, for students to perform the labs inside of them. The notebooks contain everything an image processing lab usually contains but encapsulated in a single website. So that was actually very useful for the pandemic situation because students only needed somehow to access a website and then they could do everything that they would traditionally have done on campus. Ce que j'ai particulièrement aimé dans les notebooks, c'est que c'était programmé par exemple et du coup c'était très guidé, on n'était pas laissé seul. They get interactive image visualization. They get an easy to use development environment to try out their image processing code and they also get access to the most recent technologies that there are in image processing. Les notebooks, ils m'ont beaucoup aidé pour l'image processing parce qu'en fait le cours il est assez théorique et on voyait beaucoup de techniques et tout mais on voyait pas les aspects pratiques et du coup ça nous donnait on pouvait voir comment les faire et ce que ça faisait en résultat immédiatement. The notebooks themselves are the labs. They have all the parts the student will need to interact with images, with algorithms, and with applications of image processing. The students are asked basically to fill in the notebooks. There's a lot of content already when they get the, the notebook. There's the explanation, there's the mathematical theory that they review from the theory classes, and the framework for the software they have to develop. And then they just have to fill in small parts. So uh, the paradigm is programming by example. Some of the students that get into the courses don't know how to program at all and by when they finish they can't defend themselves in image processing programming in both JavaScript and Python. In our case we had to develop quite a lot of software infrastructure in order to be able to run the labs because there was so much that we wanted to do. So we wanted a way uh, for students to view images interactively inside the notebook and that was not ready. You're planning to put all of that into the image viewer tutorial. We developed our own library, open source library, uh, that is called uh, Interactive Kit, which is a toolbox for interactively viewing images and signals inside Jupyter Notebooks. For me, I think something that was very important and very challenging also was just making sure that the lab in itself was as interesting and as easy to follow as possible for a student. So for me, the most challenging part was to give um, good feedback. So to think about every possibility about what kind of mistakes the students could make. Now we have developed software to give them uh, remarks on what they did right and what they did wrong next to the grade. These have been very well received by the students. If I would have to give advice to other teachers at EPFL that want to develop uh, similar projects as ours, one of the main things we did right was to hire two excellent master students that could serve as a bridge between the level of the instructor, the teacher, the postdoc, the PhD student, and the level of the master student that is trying to learn. In our case, we, we got two master students that just had finished the IP2, the second of the courses, and that was a really effective technique to reaching at the level of the student.